Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather in the next storm already moving into the Pacific Northwest, spreading precip into the interior. So that's what we'll be focusing on the next storm system in this update. It, the storm track looks like it's going to remain active actually for quite a while, and I'll, I'll show you what I'm thinking with that too. And with this storm coming into the Pacific Northwest, in fact, you know what? Let me just bring it up on radar right now. So it's going to spread pre-storm snow. The jet is, is kind of in a rut after the last storm. That's one of the, the benefits of having a large storm lead off a series, that it sets up the jet. And so the precip is just going to be escorted down the jet uh, on this northwest flow orientation into the west. So there's your snow, um, well, precip in the Pacific Northwest hitting right now. There's also precip up here in BC and in Banff. Let me go down and see if I can grab the uh, the Pendleton uh, radar here. And you can see there's precip sliding through. Um, this is all pre-storm. The, the low is still sitting out over the Pacific, but this is moving in. That will be sliding down into parts of Idaho and Montana. In fact, let me see what this looks like out of Missoula. Yeah, so it's going to start to pick on precip moving into Missoula as well. The, the motion with this is down in this direction and in this direction. So all of that will be kind of dropping down out of the northwest. So that is your radar update. Um, let me just show you a couple of cams as well. Um, so here's Sunshine Village and you can see it is shrouded right now. There is snow coming down across the higher peaks and temperatures are in the teens and 20s. So things look very good there with this storm system coming in. And look how beautiful it is in Alta today after a 25 inch storm total. Unbelievable, so good to see. I think that actually matched or exceeded their normal snow for all of October. Got that out of one storm system. I mean, it's just a spectacular day. And you've got snow coming there as well out of this. There's pre-storm snow and there's main snow coming. So I'll be looking at both. And it's a beautiful dip in Big Sky. Big Sky ended up being a, a bullseye with like, 12 to 24 inches of snow and it's a beautiful day there and you've got snow coming. Um, I wrote about all of this um, this morning on my blog. We'll get to the uh, the future radar here in a second but I talked about the next storm system. Looks like there's a few comments. Um, I showed some of the cams. Aspen Snowmass did well out of this. Um, the Front Range ski areas didn't do as well like A Basin, Loveland. Winter Park and Keystone, they got some snow, two, three, four, five, six inches, but nothing like what some of the western slope ski areas got, like Aspen Snowmass, and there's a cam this morning out of Big Sky. Unbelievable. So I talked about the big uh, the setup right now with the lows just all lined up, and uh, that storm system, you can see the low, the blues there, the anomalies would uh, peak across the Intermountain West between uh, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, that's when the main low comes through, although there is going to be precip ahead of it. That's the pre-storm snow. Let me show you that. So this is the future uh, radar. Um, so there's the current situation. As I move this ahead in time, there's Tuesday at about noon. Notice there's some blue sliding into the Tetons, the Wasatch, and into northern Colorado. That's just pre-storm snow. Move ahead a little bit more. Um, so there it is at 8.15 in the morning on Wednesday, still a little bit of snow sliding through Colorado, but the main low is still sitting back to the northwest, but here it comes. You can see it coming. So there is uh, about noontime on Thursday, so another round of snow for the Tetons and the Wasatch and moving into Colorado at that point, and then it's uh, sliding on through. So there's a, another look at it, everything in motion, and then it slides through Colorado, and there it is again. Here comes the main low sliding through Colorado on Thursday. All right, let's, I want to take a look at um, what the GFS is thinking about this. Um, and then we'll talk about also what it thinks in the extended. So this is the current set, set up right there, low moving out. Here comes the next, the next pressure, the low pressure anomaly. Here it is. You can see the blue sliding through Utah, Wyoming, Colorado. This is uh, it peaks the 26th and 27th and it moves out. And then there's a period of some higher pressures across the west, although look up to Alaska and, the, and BC, you've got uh, low pressure anomalies up there just waiting in the wings. So eventually that will start to take over. Okay, here's the view on the 31st. So Halloween right here. Pressures are breaking down and by the 1st, um, a big ball of sort of like lower anomalies are sliding out through the northern tier 
And then it kind of pinwheels back on Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado uh, somewhere around the third or fourth. So the active pattern remains in place. Let me show you what I'm thinking as far as accumulation goes um, through the 28th, through all of today, through the 28th. Another four on the way, four inches for the Wasatch, another seven to eight in the Tetons, another few inches up there in Big Sky. Big numbers in the Pacific Northwest, one to two feet on the way up there, and probably another, and probably two to six on the way for um, Interior BC and Banff. And Colorado, I like what I'm seeing, four to ten on the way. And this one should deliver a little bit more right on top of the Continental Divide and just east of the Divide where the last storm was a little bit light. You know, I mentioned A Basin and Winter Park and and Loveland and even Eldora for that matter and Keystone all those will get a little bit more out of this next shot coming in with this storm system so there you go always appreciate you guys tuning in here and I'll keep things updated all week take care